Number 10, this charming man. Immediately, what the, are you f***ing serious? The Smiths. Well, it seems as though I will be doing more reaction videos this year. I got seriously tired of doing them after a while, and I don't know, I just didn't get a ton of fulfillment out of them, but it seems to be something that you guys like. It seems to be a good way for people to find the channel, so I'll start incorporating that more, just as a business decision, I suppose. And today, we're gonna rip Watch Mojo a new asshole. This is their top 10 hardest rock songs to play on guitar. Now, when they say top 10, they mean specifically 10 songs. When they say hardest, I imagine that means of all of the rock songs that have guitar in it, these are the 10 absolute hardest bar none. I don't think it's a stretch for me to assume that. I think it would be a stretch for me to assume that this is 10 of the hardest rock songs. The word of is conveniently missing from this title. So we're going to be judging them as if these are the absolute hardest 10 rock songs. Now, obviously, it's next to impossible to really determine the 10 truly hardest rock songs. But I've already watched this video one time, so we'll see just how fucking awful they are at their jobs. Hey, Future Mike here sipping on tea. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I list out 10 songs that I'm not even sure are the hardest rock songs to play on guitar, but are harder than almost every single song that they listed on their list. Easy. It's not that hard of a song. Anyone can play guitar, but few can master it. Welcome mm -hmm. to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 hardest rock songs to play on the guitar. The top 10 hardest. Not 10 of the hardest, the top 10. Funny enough, they have Perpetual Burn here by Jason Becker, not listed, but just as an example of something very hard. And this is actually substantially harder than most of the songs on their list. For this list, we'll be looking at the songs that guitarists find diff Funny enough, again, Ingve Malmsteen sitting right there. Less than 10% of guitar players can play at Ingve speed and yet he is nowhere to be found on this stupid fucking list. For this list, we'll be looking at the songs that guitarists find difficult to play. Whether the songs require increased focus, dexterity, technique, or just have a difficult or unusual groove to maintain, flow to endure, or complex structure to cope with. Okay, who did they ask? What guitar player? They said that guitar players consider. Which ones did you ask? Again, Nottingham Lace by fucking Buckethead. Harder than most of the songs they have listed on this damn list. Like, it's hilarious to me. They intro these with, like, three artists who are very clearly writing some extremely virtuosic pieces. Not necessarily that you have to like it, just very hard to perform. To be considered for this list, songs must have particular challenges for even the most virtuosic of guitarists throughout. Okay, particular challenges for even the most virtuosic of guitarists throughout. Not just the solo no matter how emotive or majestic it may be. This shouldn't even be on the list. You can technically say, yeah, it's like no one plays with the feel of David Gilmore, but then that means that anything that David Gilmore plays is one of the hardest things to play. And I'm sorry, that's a giant pile of fucking crock of shit. You're not gonna convince me that the comfortably numb solo is hard. Either way, not to get too far off the point, the main focus is even the most virtuosic of players can find difficult. Keep this in mind. Number 10, This Charming Man. Immediately, what the, are you fucking serious? The Smiths, don't get me wrong, Jimmy Marr, is that his fucking name, Jimmy Marr? Whatever fucking, Johnny Marr, Johnny Marr, whatever. I don't know, cause I'm a good guitar player. I don't fucking know alternative guitar players to save my life. I don't really give a shit. The point is, when I saw this on the lists, This Charming Man, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe something weird is happening here that I'm not 100% sure how to interpret by listening to it. Maybe there's something a little bit more difficult. I went and looked up the tab. No, there's not something more difficult. I could learn this song in three days without trying tops if I really tried easily in a day. And that's with not really using the writing or playing technique that he normally does. This is a difficult song for an alternative rock song, maybe, but not for a guitar player. I know several guitarists here in Nashville that are better than me, but wouldn't consider themselves virtuosic, who could dominate this song. This is not that hard. 
This list already sucks. Sure, there may be flashier or tappier songs around. Sure, there may be songs that are actually harder than this song. But pick up your Telecaster or Rickenbacker if someone's shooting a video around you and see if you can nail this. Chances are, you can't. Yes, if you're trying to figure out how to play it by ear and you just randomly pick up your Telecaster and try and learn it, yes, it will be difficult to learn by ear. But if you actually sit down and are familiar with the song, it's not that hard. As such, the song makes constant use of arpeggios and a lopsided clave rhythm with only occasional chord stabs. It that doesn't mean it's hard. All you're doing is saying things that make it sound more technical than what it really is. Arpeggios and weird rhythms do not make things hard on guitar. You know what makes things hard on guitar? Speed. Fingerings such as, I don't know, maybe something like this. If you have to stretch from... I challenge anyone out there to try and do this cleanly with holding all three of these down. It's a pretty big fucking stretch and you're holding a power chord at the same time. So boom, boom, boom. Harder than anything in that stupid dog shit song. Vocals, but it also has a serious risk of crippling your fretting hand. Somewhere, there is a left hand that never gives out. Crippling your fretting hand? Get fucked! A left hand that never gives out? You're such a fucking crack of fucking bullshit. Number nine, Little Wing. And this is when I realized this is not the top 10 hardest rock songs to play on guitar. This is the top 10 songs that are harder to play than what they sound. Little Wing does not sound like a super difficult piece to play when sat next to something that has the blazing fire of, say, a Dream Theater song. But when you really dig into the technique that's necessary for Little Wing, it is a lot more difficult than the simple, um, warm, inviting, and kind of melancholy sound that is Little Wing. I've learned Little Wing before. It's not easy. It's not the hardest song, but it's not easy. If it was so difficult for even the most virtuosic players to have to tackle, how come everyone learns it? Don't let its slow tempo fool you, however, as Little Wing will occasionally switch from 4-4 time to 2-4. That's not hard. Switching from 4-4 time to 2-4 is not hard. You know what's hard? The fingerings. The fingerings and getting the proper articulation when your hands are all clustered all kinds of weird ways and you're trying to hit all of these open notes at the same time. That's what's difficult. None of the stupid shit that you're talking about as if you know what the fuck you're talking about. I'll even grant them, yes, it's a harder than average song, but not for any of the stupid shit that you're listing. What a bunch of fucking fakes. For loads of unusual suspended two chords, continual hammer-ons and pull-offs even while gripping chords, and will require you to bring in your fretting hand's thumb to balance out the workload. Oh my god! The end of days! No one's ever had to curl their thumb over to frickin' fret a thing on the fretboard before. As for getting the notes right, only practice and patience can help you there. Thank you so much, Kiwasabi. Number eight, Snow, hey yo, Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's also total bullshit. Again, I'll grant them, it sounds easier to play than what it actually is, but it's not that hard. I was able to learn that at about three quarters speed in about five minutes of practice. I'm not a virtuosic player. As a matter of fact, there are a butt ton of very popular metal guitarists who are substantially better than me. Now, I will grant him, there's some pretty awkward fingerings going on there. Got this guy. Then you got this guy, where you have to do a major triad, but you have to use your middle finger and use your ring finger to hit the hammer on. It's hard to do sitting like this. This is very awkward. And then you kind of move that shape around. So yes, harder than it sounds, substantially harder. And it actually sounds pretty cool, but not fucking remotely close to top 10 hardest. If I can pick up that technique in five minutes without ever having attempted it before, it's not that fucking hard. Picture it. You've locked your pointer finger down as a picture it. capo, got your fingers to pull off and hammer on just right, you've got a grip on the alternate picking pattern, and you've even managed to maneuver the groove. But then, the riff moves. The riff moves. No, all, all it does is change one chord. You have two chord progressions, and they're the same thing repeated over and fucking over again. Yes, it requires consistency, which is not easy to do, but it's not that fucking hard. 
Sure, your fretting hand basically does the same motions all the way through snow, but then that's the problem. It's like skipping rope on a trampoline while riding a horse. No, it's not! Underwater. No, it's not! It's not fucking at all, actually. It's relatively simple. It's more like trying to juggle with your arms crossed like this. That's really more what it's like, as opposed to your stupid fucking analogy that makes no sense. As a guitar player, since it's very clear you're not one, as a guitar player, it makes more sense that it's like trying to juggle with your hands crossed over like this because you're cramped up, you're a little bit off balance from where you would expect your hands to normally be, and you still have to do some fine, dexterous moves that require a little bit of strength. That actually makes sense. Fucking knob and a half. But alas, you see a glimpse of freedom with the bridge on the horizon. Only Shut to the fuck up. Brown Skipping. John Shut the fuck up. Standard flea based. Number seven, Master of Puppets. That's not even the Metallica. hardest Metallica song. Let alone, I don't think there's one Metallica song that belongs on a top 10 hardest rock songs to play on guitar, period. Look, I'm not gonna pretend like I know what the hardest Metallica song is off the top of my head, but off the top of my head, I know Dire Zeev is substantially harder than Master of Puppets, especially with the speed and the, the thrash picking that goes into that main riff. <laughs> Yeah, I can't get it right now. I can't even get the damn thing right. It's difficult. Having to maintain that over and over again is a massive bitch. I mean, yes, the verses and choruses are substantially easier, but they're still about the same difficulty as the rest of Master of Puppets. And the solo is way fucking harder than any of the solos in Master of Puppets. When you're done obeying your downstrokes, there's synchronized arpeggios and even a solo waiting for you. Synchronized arpeggios and even a solo waiting. Taking the path of synchronized arpeggios does not mean it's fucking hard. It's like I said, oh, if you had to play dotted eighth notes at 97 beats per minute. It might sound complicated, but it's really fucking easy. Hammett, you get the workload of James plus solos rife with alternate picking, tremolo picking, pinch harmony. Tremolo. I'm sorry. Let's hear this fucking cunt say this again. Get the workload of James plus solos rife with alternate picking, tremolo picking. Tremolo picking. I mean, it's fairly clear he's not a guitarist, but now it is very obvious he's not even fucking close to a musician. Tremolo picking. Tremolo picking. He probably pronounces it whammy bar. Pinch harmonies and a splash of blues. Pinch harmonies! Yes! The ever prominent pinch harmonies! It's a pinch harmonic, you presumptive cunt! Picking, tremolo picking, pinch harmonies, and a splash of blues alongside arpeggios and other general riffage. General riffage. What a fucking asshole. 200 beats per minute plus tempo and multiple time signatures, and you've got your hands full. Fuck this guy. Number six, scene seven one, the dance of eternity. Scene seven Dream one, yes. Whenever someone talks about the dance of eternity, they always say scene seven one preceding it. Cause you know, that's how people fucking talk. Okay, first of all, they knew they were fucking up if they didn't include at least one dream theater song. So you know what? I'll give them this. Is dance of eternity the hardest dream theater song? I'm gonna say probably not, but it's up there. I don't know offhand what is harder, although I would say it's definitely one of the hardest Dream Theater songs just because of so many changes and obviously John's flying everywhere. Off the top of my head, I might think Octavarium just because of how fucking long it is in general. If he's saying front to back, difficult song, try to keep up for 30 minutes. <laughs> That's all I can say. Either that or like change the seasons or some shit like that. But you know what? I'll toss him a fucking bone here. I'll toss him a bone. They got this one. Well done, Watch Mojo. I'm so proud of you for not being a total fucking brainlet. Number five, through the fire and flames, Dragon Force. Okay, I can even grant them this. Obviously, there are probably harder songs than through the fire and flames by Dragon Force, but you also, when you're making a top 10 list like this, from a business perspective, have to add some songs that like people are familiar with. Like if it was just packed with Steven Taranto songs, people would be like, well, this is fucking stupid. This is useless to me. And let's be honest, 
Watch Mojo content is for low information consumers. I'm sorry if you like it, but that's the truth of it. And that same idea of trying to like get as broad of an audience as possible to your top 10 list is why they included the fucking Smiths and why they included Jimi Hendrix on this list. It's not because they're actually two of the hardest songs. It's because they need the clickbait and they need to appease the people who aren't all about the metal shred because otherwise you're going to have people in the comments bitching about metal shred people taking over the list. So, okay, I'll give them this one. I'll let them have this one too. So, all right, two out of whatever the fuck ain't bad. Okay. Number four. KFO. This is Animals a decent inclusion. This is actually a decent inclusion. Yes, KFO by Animals as Leaders is extraordinarily difficult. Not only that, um, Tosin developed his own types of techniques to pull this shit off. I know I'd said before I didn't like how sloppy the arpeggio sounded in the beginning of KFO. I've grown to like them more. But regardless, that is not easy to replicate the way that he does it, and he can replicate it every single time. Now, would I personally say this is in the top 10 hardest rock songs to play on guitar? I don't think so, but it's it's a understandable contender, again, because of popularity, notoriety, and also because of the band Animals as Leaders. I mean, like I said, Tosin is a huge innovator on the instrument, so you know what? I can grant them this one. Given Tossin Abasi's pension for his eight string I Tossin Abasi? Talking about Tossin who plays the tremolo on his guitar? Like, if they're gonna pretend to say all of these like technical musical words that make them sound smarter than what they fucking actually are, at least look up how to pronounce the fucking words correctly, you lazy cunt. From there on, the song has nothing for you but a barrage of taps, alternate picking, taps, tapped chords, tap double stops, taps, sweep picking, sweep, taps, bass style slaps, and taps with bars of eight. And you know, it does get a little annoying hearing him say taps over and over again, but frankly, he's not wrong. That song is extremely difficult, not only with the techniques that you have to do, but transitioning between all of the different techniques seamlessly is extraordinarily difficult. I'll give him that. Number three, Sultans of Swing. This Dire should not strings. be on the list, but don't get me wrong. This is a much more difficult song to play than what it sounds. It's actually quite difficult. The first major challenge will be figuring out Mark Knopfler's unique picking style, which uses the thumb, yes. pointer, and middle fingers in place of a traditional pick. The yes. Now, if you want to try and play this with a pick by itself, it'll actually be substantially harder, but it is very difficult to learn Mark Knopfler's finger picking technique. He, he played exclusively with his fingers. That is probably the hardest part about this song is learning his technique. That and also, I mean, even with the technique, he played some pretty difficult stuff in general. Top 10 hardest rock songs? Highly fucking doubtful on that, man. I don't think so. While the fills throughout are challenging enough, Knopfler saves it up for the solos, especially the second solo and the infamous quick fire triplet riffs that bring the song to a close. That's actually some of the easier stuff to play in the solo. Um, to somewhat demonstrate here. It's not that hard to do. At that speed, it's pretty difficult, but if I did my fingers, that's actually easier to do with your fingers in my opinion. It's just really getting the coordination down. And that's with me not being great at all with finger picking. That's probably one of the easiest parts of that entire solo, as a matter of fact. But there's a lot other hard parts in that solo. I understand why they wanted to highlight it. It is one of the highlights of the song and one of the only reasons I think people love the song so much, but that's just me. Number two, Cliffs of Dover, Eric Johnson. Cliffs of Dover is actually a very difficult song, a lot harder than it sounds, and it actually sounds very hard too. Eric Johnson does some really, really weird stuff string skipping stuff, some weird phrasing on a fretboard for a guitar, not to mention plays really damn fast on this track and beautifully, by the way, fantastic song, fantastic performance. Is this top 10 hardest rock songs to play on guitar? I would say there's probably 10 harder than this one, but again, considering the popularity, 
I can probably let this one slide too. Apart from the dizzying string skipping intro, this track isn't the fastest on the list, but Cliffs of Dover will take most of your focus and a lot of your stamina to make it to the end. That's not wrong. You did okay on that one, Watch Mojo. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I'm not sure offhand whether that should be or not. Tornado of Souls definitely shouldn't be. Don't get me wrong. It's not the world's easiest solo. It's a really fucking cool solo, but there's way harder metal songs out there, both riff-wise and solo-wise. All right. Tender Surrender by Steve Vai. I could see that being on the list over the first three by a long fucking shot. That's way harder than any of those songs. I'm not sure if it's the hardest Vi song or not. It's it's pretty up there. It's pretty difficult, I will say. Number one, Eruption. That is the biggest pile of bullshit of all. The fact that they put Eruption as number one. Eruption is one of those solos that people who are just getting into tapping and shredding learn. I know many people in my life, in real life, who can play Eruption. That means that it's very likely it's not the top 10 hardest rock songs to play on fucking guitar. Steve Vai's Tender Surrender is harder to play than this song. Any of the three intro artists, Jason Becker, Ingve Momstein, or Buckethead, are going to have songs that are harder than Eruption by Eddie Van Halen. It just doesn't make any fucking sense to me, man. Like, what's what's your criteria? I mean, it does. what the fuck is your criteria at the end of the day? This means nothing. Here, I'll list 10 songs that are harder than almost every single song you listed in your top 10. One, Bleed by Meshuggah. I dare anyone to be able to play at that speed, let alone that speed for three minutes. Trying to get all of those chunks correct? Oh my God. Two, No Boundaries by Michelangelo Badio. Enough said. Three, Jumpstart by Greg Howe. Between some of the weird fingerings and the speed, you will break yourself. Tendinitis by Jason Richardson. A human being should not be able to play this. Hip Dipper by Arch Echo. They'll slap their giant jazz fusion dick across your face.
Throne of the Anxious by Steven Taranto. Again, a human being should not be able to play this fast. Synchronal Steps by Alex Argento. Really, really weird phrasing that's gonna throw you off every single time for a long period of time. Erotic Cakes by Guthrie Govan, blending insane articulation that is extremely hard to replicate with some blazing fast and weird timing and phrasing. Forty ounces by Polyphia. Unless you are a math rock master, that's going to be a very difficult one for almost everyone. Typewriter two by Panzer Ballet or Panzer Ballet. I don't know, but either way, it's fucking hard. So yeah, Watch Mojo fucking sucks. Why do their top 10 lists always suck besides the fact that they don't care that much? I think they intentionally do not try very hard so that they will get things wrong so that people are more likely to click on their videos and leave comments about how wrong they are and that brings their engagement up. And they're also utilizing SEO with having the proper tags and putting people into their top 10 lists that are more likely to be clicked on. It is all a money generating machine. That's all it is. It, it is nothing to do with any amount of accuracy. It has nothing to do with being informative. It's literally the potato chips of YouTube content. It's awful. And I still believe they make it intentionally wrong just to piss us off and make us click on their video. So today's lesson is never, ever, ever watch a Watch Mojo video ever. All you're doing is telling them that you like it when they don't try, you like it when they give you incorrect information, and you like garbage content. So that'll do it for me today. Leave a like, leave a comment, do all those great things. I really appreciate it. Hit subscribe if it's your first time here. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Become the Knights, and I will see you in the next video. Rock on.